Weak acids are weak because they form an equilibrium with water. They do not produce 100% products. So a weak acid, for example, HF, will react with water and it will undergo ionization, but it will not be a, a complete products reaction. It will be an equilibrium reaction. And I'll get my H3O plus and my F minus. A shortcut way of writing this is simply HF in equilibrium with H plus and F minus. This bottom form is not technically correct, and actually the top one isn't completely correct, it's just more correct, but either one is an acceptable way to write an equilibrium reaction with a weak acid. Let's look at the bottom one just for simplicity's sake. This is an equilibrium reaction, and as such it has an equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is the concentration of the products raised to the stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentration of the reactants. If I were looking at the top reaction to write the equilibrium constant, I would get exactly the same thing, except for I would have an H3O plus instead of the H plus. I would leave out the water because it's a pure liquid, and so we have simply the difference between substituting in H3O plus or H plus in this position, and H plus is an acceptable abbreviation for H3O plus. So this is fine for equilibrium constant for our weak acid. We've seen this a couple times now. We sometimes will put a subscript on the equilibrium constant K and a subscript lowercase a stands for acid. This is the equilibrium constant for a weak acid um, ionizing in water. As such, sometimes we call this the ionization constant, but it is an equilibrium constant. Uh, if I know initial values, uh, and equilibrium values of each of these species, I could calculate at the equilibrium constant just like we did in chapter 15. Another way to work this problem, just like we did in chapter 15, is if we know the equilibrium constant, then we can get some information about the equilibrium values of H plus, F minus, and HF. And so numerically, our problems are going to be very, very, very much like the problems we worked in Chapter 15, but the vocabulary is all new. This is a weak acid. This equilibrium reaction, it will be assumed you can write from scratch. So you're going to be told about the concentration of your weak acid. You're going to need to know to write that equilibrium reaction and set up your equilibrium constant. We'll, we'll use ice tables and the whole lot, just like we did in our equilibrium chapter. We often use an abbreviation for weak acids in water, even more abbreviated than this. Um, there are lots of different weak acids, but they all have the proton to donate. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that donates a proton, and so often we will abbreviate a weak acid as HA, where the A stands for the anion that is with the H plus, the proton, in this equation. And so this is an acceptable way to abbreviate any weak acid reaction. Now some weak acids actually have ionic charges. For example, uh, the ammonium ion, NH4 plus, acts as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Uh, it's not, it doesn't quite fit the abbreviation HA because it has, well, for one thing, it has four H's, but it also has a plus charge. But its equilibrium reaction we could represent as the H plus plus what's left over after the H plus is donated, and that would be the NH3. You'll notice that we have produced NH4 plus's conjugate base. This is the conjugate base of this acid. So this is a weak acid, and this is the weak acid's conjugate base. Even though this doesn't quite look like our generic reaction, you can still use the generic reaction as an abbreviation for any weak acid reaction in water. The equilibrium constants for these weak acids are so important and so useful that there are tables of values. And so, and you have the, a table of values in your textbook, you have a more complete table in the appendix, and if you need a, a value for the equilibrium constant for a weak acid that isn't in your tables, you can Google it. And we see some links, and if we go to images, we've got lots of images of tables. These are tables that list weak acids, and they give us the Ka value. This one gives us the formulas.
All right, here's another table that looks like it's more complete. It's got some bases in it. We'll talk about those next. Here's another table with a bunch of weak acids. So we've just got lots and lots of values for Ka's for these weak acids listed here. So anything that you need that you can't find in your textbook, you're going to Google it. In a similar fashion, we have weak bases that behave in a very similar way. So let's look at weak bases next. All right, when you have a weak base, it is considered a weak base because it does not ionize 100%. When it reacts with water, it does produce the hydroxide ion, that's the Arrhenius definition of a weak base in water, uh, or the Bronsted-Lowry definition, it accepts a proton, but it is not a 100% reaction. An example of a weak base is ammonia. When ammonia reacts with water, it forms an equilibrium. The water donates the proton to the ammonia, that leaves me with NH4 plus and OH minus. The presence of OH minus in the product of this reaction indicates it's a base. In this reaction, in the weak base reaction, I can't leave the water out. There is no shortcut way of writing this without the water um, because the water is what is donating the proton. If I left the water out, I wouldn't be able to balance it. And the water is also, in this case, what's giving me the hydroxide ion. I can still write an equilibrium constant and like we did for the acid, we usually see a subscript B to, to stand for the fact that it's a base. It is products over reactants. So I've got my NH4 plus on top and my OH minus on top. I leave the water out, but I do need the ammonia on bottom. So this is the equilibrium constant for this weak base reaction. There are numerical values for these equilibrium constants, and they are so important that we usually have tables of these values. So just as we found tables of weak acids, we can also find tables of weak bases. One thing to note is that my weak base in this case is ammonia, NH3. The NH4 plus is its conjugate acid. A minute ago, we used NH4 plus as an example of an acid in water, and we said at that time the NH3 was its conjugate base. Let me remind you of that reaction. That was the reaction we had a minute ago, and it had a Ka value that looked like this. NH4 plus is a weak acid. This is its reaction with water, and it gives me NH3, which is a weak base, its conjugate base. NH3 in water would give me NH4 plus, which is its conjugate acid. If I take these numerical values of Ka and Kb for this conjugate pair, this is the Kb for ammonia, this is the Ka for the ammonium ion, and these two are conjugate pairs, and I multiply them together, this is what I get. I have simply rewritten their formula as listed up here above, and now they're multiplied together. This is a dot, and if I look, I can cancel the ammonia. There's one on top and one on bottom. I can cancel the ammonium ion. There's one on top and one on bottom and I'm left with the Ka times the Kb for this pair is equal to H plus times OH minus. Well, recall H plus times OH minus is Kw. And this is true for any acid-base conjugate pair. The Ka times the Kb for that acid-base conjugate pair is equal to the Kw, the 10 to the minus 14, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And so if I know the Ka value for the ammonium ion, if I've got that in a table somewhere, but I need the Kb for ammonia and I can't find that, I can use this relationship to calculate the Kb for ammonia using the Ka for its conjugate, the ammonium ion, and 10 to the minus 14, which is the Kw. One last note about these K values. Let me get some space and then we'll talk about it. When I see the tables of values with Ka's and Kb's, let's take Ka for example, often a, a column in that table will be a pKa. Lowercase p, capital a, K, subscript A, um, indicates that what we're doing is exactly the same thing that we were doing with pH. We are taking the negative log, in this case, of the Ka. If I calculate the negative log of the Ka value, I end up with a value that's called the pKa. There are times, there are going to be times that we see that these values are useful. 
what you need to be very careful about is that this value is not a pH. The numerical value for the pKa for an acid can vary anywhere on the scale. It might be 1, it might be 2, it might be 13 or 14. So just because a pH value shouldn't be 13 or 14 for an acid, the pKa value for a weak acid might be 13 or 14. It is not the pH value. In a similar fashion, if I have the table of KBs, I can calculate the pKb by taking the negative log of the KB. And again, a, a certain weak base might have a pKb of 3. Well, if the pH were 3, that wouldn't be a base, but it's perfectly acceptable for a weak base to have the pKb value of 3. For a conjugate pair, and only for a conjugate pair, the pKa plus the pKb of that conjugate pair will equal 14 in a very similar fashion to the pH plus pOH equals 14. Not for the same reasons necessarily, but mathematically it does work out to this. So if you know the pKa for an acid, you can calculate the pKb for his conjugate base. This only works for the conjugate pair.